What is going on everyone? Leon checking in and we're at it again with another video. In today's video, we'll be demonstrating Nova Launcher Basics and how to use your Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 3 for in-car infotainment. Now, if you're looking for a more in-depth video about Nova Launcher, you can click the card in the corner of this video. Now, my future goal is to break down Nova Launcher for the Z Fold 3 so you can maximize your foldable experience. Now, this video will include infotainment mount and hardware tips, recommendations, and a demonstration. Now, using your Z Fold 3 as infotainment is an excellent solution to bring your car into 2022 if it's missing a modern infotainment setup. Videos like this demonstrate the Z Fold 3's multi-purpose uses, which is important for justifying its premium price tag. Now, this video is featured on the Samsung Galaxy playlist, so you can find information related to this topic quickly and easily. As always, we only feature products or services I buy, use, or am interested in. Now, the items you see in this video can be found at the Amazon storefront link in the description below. Don't have time to watch the whole video? We're now a podcast you can find on multiple platforms by searching for Pixels Cracked. And if you are listening to this on a podcast, you can find the more detailed video and YouTube channel by searching for Pixels Cracked as well. All things said, let's go ahead and get into it. So let's start by modifying the system UI. Now, in order to do this, you want to install a launcher app. Now, for this video, I'll be using Nova Launcher Prime since I have the most experience with this launcher app. Now, that being said, this is the premium version of Nova Launcher, which, in my opinion, is worth the extra coin. Now, of course, you can have multiple pages for your infotainment setup, but we're just going to focus on the main page to keep this video short. So here we are at the main page in Nova settings. The first thing we want to do is adjust the home screen grid. So we're going to look for home screen and tap on that option. Now, this opens up a new page and we're going to want to focus on this first category here. It's titled layout and the first option we're going to want to click on here is desktop grid. Now I've been experimenting with desktop grid on the Z Fold 3 and it seems like an 8x8 setup seems to work best. Now if you are looking to modify the grid, simply slide your finger along any of the axes and you can see that the change happens here live so you can see how that grid is going to change. Underneath this, we also have an option titled Sub Grid Positioning, and I recommend checking this. Now, this allows you to place widgets or icons halfway through grid cells, which can further optimize your user interface. Next, we can exit this window by tapping Done. Now, the next item we're going to select here is Icon Layout, and tapping on that opens up a new page. Now, the most important items here are icon size and label. Now, you can see I set my icon size to 100%, and that's because it makes the icons obviously larger, and that's going to be important when your Z Fold 3 is mounted to your dash and it's arm lengths away. It's going to make it easy to identify icons and tap on them at that length. And then you can see we have the label option here and it's disabled with the slider. And the reason it's disabled is when you don't have labels, it also allows you to make the icon size larger. We can then exit out of this page by tapping on the arrow in the top left hand corner. Now the final option we want to focus on in this category is dock and we're going to tap on that and that's going to open a new page. Now the most important items here will be the dock background, dock pages, dock icons, and icon layout. So we're going to start with dock background by tapping on that. That's going to open a new page. Now you can see that I have the dock background enabled and we actually have a preview image of the dock at the bottom of the display here. Here we can also choose a background color for the dock background. The next option we have here is transparency and I set the dock background to 70% and that gives it a modern look. You can see that it's somewhat see-through and we can actually see my wallpaper behind it. And then we also have an option for padding and when padding is enabled it leaves a little bit of space on the left and right side of the dock for comparison i'm going to disable it and you can see that it fills up a little bit more of the screen on the left and right side again we are going to enable it and now we have a little bit more space again on the left and right side of that dock and i just like this appearance more than not having the padding enabled so we can back out of this page by tapping on the back arrow in the top left hand corner. Our next option is dock pages and tapping on this opens a pop up window. And essentially this is the amount of pages your dock will have. Now you can set up to it looks like five pages. 
but I am working with two because we can fit a certain amount of icons on each page. But if you're looking to understand this a little bit better, Doc Pages is essentially the equivalent to your pages that you can flip through on your main display. So in my opinion, two seems to do the job here and we're going to tap done. Our next option is dock icons and tapping on this opens up a new window where we can adjust the amount of icons that fit into the dock. Now this is more subjective, but six seems to be a good place to start. Now, of course you can change the amount of icons that fit into the dock by sliding your finger left or right. And once you've selected your number, you can tap done to close the window. And then our last option here is icon layout and tapping on that opens up a new page. And the most important feature on this page is match desktop size. You wanna make sure that's enabled and obviously it's going to match these icons with the size of the desktop icons. Again, this is important because we wanna make these icons as large as possible so that they're easy to see and access when your phone is mounted and it's arm distance away. Now you can see that we have an option for labels and we can enable or disable that. That's more optional here. It doesn't seem to affect the size of the icons in the dock. So if you wanted to, you could have labels on, but I'm leaving them off because it gives my user interface a cleaner appearance. Now we're going to tap on the arrow in the top left hand corner twice. And that's going to return us back to the home screen. Now the last option we want to modify here is going to be located in advance. So we're going to scroll all the way down and then we're going to have this arrow in the bottom right hand corner. We're going to tap on that and it's going to expand the advanced options. Now the most important items here that we're going to want to enable are widget overlap. So we want to make sure that that slider is highlighted and then overlap when placing. We want to make sure that that option is checked. Now the reason you want to enable both of these settings is it allows you to overlap icons and widgets and this allows you to maximize the amount of items that fit on a page but it also gives your user interface a modern futuristic experience. Now we can exit out of this page by tapping on the arrow in the top left hand corner and that brings us back to the Nova settings home page. Next we want to create a custom gesture for our navigation app which allows us to get our navigation up and running quickly for infotainment use. So in order to do this we're going to look for gestures and inputs and we're going to tap on that. Now this opens up a new page and the category we want to focus on is gestures. Now you can use any of these gestures to launch your navigation app but I prefer to use the two finger swipe up and you can see I already have an app selected for it that would be Waze. That's the navigation app that I selected. Now I enjoy using Waze because it gives you crowdsourced data and it gives you information such as construction, traffic, and speed traps. Now if you did want to modify this gesture, you would simply tap on it and that opens up a new page. And you can see we have a toolbar at the top and options include Nova, Apps, and Shortcuts. Now we want to select Waze to use with this gesture and that's an app. So we're going to tap on apps and then we get this nice long list. It's categorized alphabetically and we're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom here and we're going to select ways. We can then navigate back to the Nova settings homepage by tapping on the arrow in the top left hand corner. The last thing we want to do is verify that Nova launcher is set as the default launcher. Now this is critical because if we don't set Nova Launcher as the default launcher, your device will revert back to One UI, which is Samsung's launcher. Now this isn't a deal breaker, but it is a frustrating inconvenience because when your device reverts back to the original launcher, you have to go back into Nova settings and choose the Nova Launcher. Now in order to make Nova Launcher the default launcher, we're going to scroll down here until we see select default launcher and we're going to tap on this option and it's going to open a new page and you just want to verify that Nova 7 is selected as the default home app. Now if you don't have the Nova 7 option selected already, selecting it may kick you out of the app and that's fine because we're done with the basics of the Nova Launcher tutorial. So let's talk about the basic items you're going to want on your main page. And this is going to be a combination of icons and widgets. Now, of course, this is going to be based on two things, your preferences and what apps you use the most. So just to explain what I have going on here, the first item at the top here is going to be the drone mobile widget. And that just allows me to start my car remotely. Under this, we have a music widget from Black Player EX. Love this music player. It works really well. It's highly customizable and the widget looks good. I totally recommend this app if you don't have it. 
To the right of this, I have a data widget for Google Fi, and that just allows me to see my data use as I'm using this as an infotainment device. Now you can see to the top right of my data widget, we have this music icon, and that's also a widget. It's a shortcut. It allows me to enable Tune Announcer, which is an app that announces the track name and artist of a song. And I added that because it adds to the infotainment experience. Underneath our music widget, you can see that we have Google News. You know, that just gives us our news stories. If we're sitting in a parking lot or we're waiting to pick someone up, we can just simply swipe through news stories. Underneath my Phi data widget, you can see that we have another widget and it says day and 309 days. And this is an app called Day Counter. I put this here, I like this because it just helps me keep track of how many days we are into the year. And underneath this, we have another widget. Now this is Shouter. And it's kind of like Tune Announcer, except it announces your notifications out loud when you have it enabled. And under the Tune Announcer widget, we have a data saver widget. And we want to enable that sometimes if we're looking to save data. That goes back to our data widget at the top there. We don't want to overuse data. Now in the bottom left hand corner, you can see that we have the Google Assistant icon. And if you don't want to activate the Google Assistant by voice, you can tap on this icon and that brings up the Google Assistant. To the right of this, we have LastPass that allows us to access our passwords quickly and easily. And then I have a web page I put here. This is ADP. You may be familiar with it. A lot of companies use it for their workers so that they can clock in and clock out and view their work information. And then we have an app here called Audio Glow. I have to play with it. It seems to not work all that well on the Z Fold 3. I don't know if it's the Android version or the Z Fold 3 itself, but ideally if you were to tap on it, it would bring up this app that allows an image to pulsate to your music. And when it works, it's amazing. But right now I'm still having problems with it. So I can't currently recommend this app. And depending on the way your device is laid out here, your dock will either be at the bottom or on the right side. And you can see, again, we have those two dock pages and I just have my most common apps that I use there. Now, the cool thing about the Z Fold 3 is, of course, again, we've got our dock pages here, but we also have this dock that slides out and we can add more icons in there as well. So let's talk about the mount. This is the part that's going to take time since all card dashes vary. What I've done here though is use 3M dual lock adhesive strips, which I've cut for a factory appearance. I also have a TFY kitchen wall mount, which works perfectly with the Z Fold 3, and I've also placed 3M dual lock adhesive on the back of it. Now you can find these items at the Amazon storefront link in the description below if you're considering going this route. Now this mount works very well because it's secure and it snaps into place. We can then open up the arms on the dock, and then we can place our Z Fold 3 into it. And then we want to make sure that it's actually going to have a good angle. So you're going to want to make sure that you pull it completely forward there. And there we go. We have our Z Fold 3 mounted for infotainment use. Now the good thing about this dock is if you look close at the radio, you can still see the screen behind it. And we can actually move this a little bit to center our device. We can cover that up a little bit more. And if this still didn't work, I could detach this and I can move it over a little bit. That way I get my Z Fold 3 in the spot that I like the most. So now that we have everything set up, we're going to perform a simple test starting with music. Now again, I have the Black Player EX app installed and I recommend it because it looks nice and it's highly customizable. But it also comes with a nice widget and that's the main thing. You're going to want a music app that has that nice widget so you can easily access your music. So we're going to tap play. And this is going to play the music from my Z Fold 3 to my car stereo speakers. Now it's important to note if you have an older car, you may need an auxiliary cable if your car has an auxiliary port or a Bluetooth transmitter to do this. Now the nice thing here is you can also use other music apps. So I have Amazon Music and Spotify installed. And you can also use these apps by voice. Now we're going to return to our main screen and we're going to test out the navigation. So again, we enable our navigation with a two finger swipe up and we're using Waze and we're going to demonstrate that. And you can see that opens Waze really quick. So here I've selected a destination, McDonald's. We're going to tap go. And then we're going to tap go now. Looks like you're my ride. Hope you don't mind a few bumps along the way. And I'm not 
talking about potholes. And this is the thing I like about Waze. So I selected the Spartan Chief from Halo. He's my navigation voice. And this is something you can do whether you're a techie or a sci-fi junkie. And it just completes the experience. So that is it for today's video. If you enjoyed it and found it useful, please leave a like. If you're watching this on YouTube and have any questions or comments, as always, drop those down below and I'll do my best to answer them. Now, there are three ways you can support the channel and podcast. The first way is to click on the Amazon storefront link in the description below. There you'll find items that I have bought or would like to buy and anything you buy from the storefront does support the content. The next way you can support us is just by sharing this content with someone who might enjoy it or find it useful. And the last way you can show your support is just by clicking the subscribe or follow button. Now liking and subscribing are important. Those are your ways to vote on whether you like the video or the podcast. Liking and subscribing are also important for new viewers and listeners. If new viewers and listeners see likes and subscribers, they're going to think that the content is helpful, worth watching, and listening to. So that is pretty much it. And until next time... Leon check in out.